sole reason a woman should be struggling in any capacity is she's in a relationship with a man. There's no reason she should be, be exhausted, stretched thin. She should have a central nervous system dysregulated, like being that she's in fight or flight mode on a regular basis. And she don't even know how to truly relax and just be calm and be at peace. Or be soft. There's no reason why any woman should be laying up every day and night next to a grown man while she's struggling. I said this, man, I said it recently to my cousin, but I've said this many times before. I've been saying it for years and everybody get mad at me just like they do any other time. Do y'all you over here talking about this? You ain't perfect. You acting like men supposed to be. Look, man, I, I get mad at your mom. Ar argue with her. Okay. <laughs> Because maybe that's where you should have learned this. But it's pretty fundamental. Even if you look around and you look at relationships, you look at any situation where a woman is, is perpetually exhausted and tired and, again, stretched thin, stressed out. If, if a woman on a daily basis is battling with stress, stress, stress and just general life, we're not talking about she didn't come in healed. We're not talking about, you know, she hasn't done the work she was supposed to do. But if a woman is battling stress day in and day out while in a relationship with a man. That relationship can count his days. That man can count his days. It, it's, it's not natural. I don't care. Oh, I, I'm, I got a lot of money. I could be the breadwinner. If you are struggling, you are in survival mode while you're with a man. Your attraction, your intimacy, your, your security with that man is deteriorating day by day by day. And at some point, it's just going to feel like, well, I'm doing this because I have an obligation, because I don't want to be a bad person. I don't want to kick him out of my house because that would be mean of me. But it won't be because you know that you and this guy are equally yoked. And you guys are great, are a great fit for each other. And y'all tell me, agree or disagree, that as a woman, you should not be struggling for, for a long period of time if you are in a relationship with a man. Financially struggling. Mentally struggling. You should not be struggling while in a relationship. Now, if you are by yourself, of course, you want to be at least good. You want to be able to stand on your own two feet. You, want, you don't want to be looking for anybody to fix you, so to speak. I get that. I said, this is true. You mentally leave first. Absolutely. I try to tell people. They don't want to listen to me. But let me tell you about the conversation I had that even inspired this because I was talking to my cousin about this. And... She was having a hard time, just like a lot of women, kind of putting words to how to communicate to her man that she wasn't happy, being that he wasn't doing anything major. It wasn't like he was betraying her or beating on her or anything like that. He didn't cuss her out. But there was something missing, even though the man himself was essentially the same that she first met and fell in love with. As time has gone on, I think a little over a year that they've been together, been together she just found herself not really being as invested into the relationship. So what I asked her, of course, was the dynamic of the relationship. What's going on? What conversations have you already had? And the gist of it is he does a lot with his free time. He plays video games. He I don't even want to say too many specifics, but beyond video games, he has some other recreational activities that he does. But he makes enough to cover half the bills. Now, this ain't another 50 50 bills paying conversation. The principle of it is I told her, I was like, hey, look, I'm not mad at him just, you know, being that if he's by himself. But once you get into a relationship, you're not looking at yourself strictly as, are you good? You're looking at yourself also like, am I adequate in terms of what I'm supposed to contribute to my partner's life? And yes, this goes both ways. Let me be very clear. This goes both ways. This is what I think a lot of people today don't understand. A man's purpose in a woman's life is to make her life easier. A woman's purpose in a man's life is to take his potential further, maximize him. His greatest potential, take him further. Now, I'm going to tell you why I said potential in just a second. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you now. Because a lot of y'all come into a, a man's life and he's nowhere close to his potential. He's not pursuing his potential. And you try to make that man go further. That's not, that's not at all what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to have a man who's already pursuing his potential would realize that as far as what he's able to by himself and then boom, take him to the next level. Where did I get that from? Did I just make that up? No. Look at, and you ain't got to believe what I believe, but this is what I know to be true. God created Adam and Eve, right? One, whenever God created Adam and he intended to make us in his image, 
He looked at Adam and said, mm, not quite it. He made Adam, but said, nope, this ain't quite in my image. As powerful as I am, as all knowing as this ain't in my image right here. And then he made woman and said, that's the missing piece. Therefore, the woman is the maximizer to the fullest vision, the full, the full idea, the design that God had. The woman was that added piece, that missing piece to maximize the original, the step one, up to par. Okay. So the woman by nature is the maximizer. Now, why do I say it's a man's job to make the woman easier? Because before God gave Adam Eve, he gave him a garden to work in. And I'm going to lose some of y'all here, but I just, hey, look, some of y'all, you ain't got to be a Bible thumper or religious person to understand the practicality in this. Before, before God said, Adam, you get a woman, he said, you, first, you got work. You got work to do. You got some things to do so that when I give you what I'm going to give you, you can take care of her. Work in the garden. Make that right. He gave us work before he gave us a woman. The problem today is a lot of women are exhausted. They're beyond their capacity because they're with a man who didn't get the work first. He didn't do the work first. He didn't prepare to make her life easier. And now you're with men who, who just depend on you and project on you. And instead of saying, hey, as a woman, what I need from you is, and they can't even be clear on this, by the way. What I need from what I need from you is they're saying as a woman, what I need from you is to take me beyond what I can do in my own power. And there are many facets to that. We're not going to get too granular in that. You have a lot of men who say, don't take me, you know, my potential high. Settle for my reality right now. Settle for my mediocrity. Take me as I am. Take me as I am. Be my peace. And you know what? I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm, again, I'm not on a pedestal. I had to learn this. As I studied the Bible for myself, as I've evolved for myself, as I've made my mistakes, horrible decisions, especially in my 20s, you know, y'all know I, I ain't got nothing to hide behind if I wanted to hide. I, I've been there. So I talk from experience. But as a man, you are out of order if you're not coming into a woman's life to make it easier. And therefore, she won't be able to maximize anything. So what does this look like in a relationship? Again, financially, why are you sitting there struggling? to pay bills, to go to a job that you hate, to, to, to get a day off where it's just for you. You can have time to do and you got a whole man in your life. Again, dudes get mad at me anytime I talk like this. Like, hey, I'm supposed to just be her sugar daddy. No, it's always gonna be an exchange of value for the man and the woman. But here's the difference. As women, y'all come in, if you just like a dude, you'll come in and find a way to add value. Matter of fact, tell me something. Maybe you're not there now. But put I down in the chat. If you've ever liked the guy so much, been so into him, that regardless of the relationship status, you came into his home and you found ways to make things easier. Maybe not even just his home, but just pure. But you, hey, let me straighten this up. You want me to cook? I can cook. You need to get some groceries in here. You know what? You need a couple of things in here that would spruce the place up, you know, get the energy, the vibration of the home up. You know what? You should get some Glade plugins. Why are you using that on your skin? There's, there's things that's better for your skin to help. You just found ways to make life like better for him, even just because you just like this guy. Maybe you loved him by this point, but you didn't need the relationship title or marriage at this point. Now, you learned your lesson that there needs to be some security on there, of course. But if there was ever a point where innately and naturally you came into a man's situation and said, how can I maximize this? And maybe now you're at a point where you got to kind of hold yourself back so that doesn't get taken advantage of. OK, so I am talking to somebody. Wanted to make sure. So for women, I've noticed that a lot of y'all come into a man's life and you're ready to do that. But here's where you get exhausted as a woman. I'm just your big brother. I'm going to keep it real with you at all times. You doing that for a man who's not already done the work in his garden. You doing that for a man who is not already pursuing his potential and on his way. Or at least, or maybe even already at the point where he's maximized his potential currently in his life. But you're doing that for that man who has not done that. He has not met the prerequisites. You're going to be exhausted. And as you get exhausted, you're going to lose attraction. You're going to lose respect for this man. You're going to lose connection with this man. And if you continue to try and overcompensate for what he didn't do before you got into the relationship with him, you may lose yourself. You may lose yourself. You may start wondering who you are. Who is this woman? I done gained weight. I done, I'm not doing the things I used to. I don't even have the 
energy or the enjoyment in what I used to love doing. I had so many goals and dreams before I got with this man, but now I'm just consumed with how to make it from day to day with this man. No, that means if, especially if you had already done the work before you got into the relationship, you're not just broken and coping with this relationship, but you really came in ready to love that you were a man who's not adding the value he's supposed to add. And for those who are just joining in, a woman is supposed to maximize a man's potential beyond what he could do by himself. A man is supposed to make that woman's life easier. You see, when God gave us our strengths and weaknesses, again, the two of us belong together to, to fulfill the vision of God saying, I'm making you in my image. If he made us all in one person, you know, if everything was all in Adam, Adam would have no weaknesses. But together, we don't have weaknesses if we're truly in our role. And it goes beyond just cooking and cleaning or protecting and providing. But making a, a woman's life easier. If you are with uh, if you're with a man and he knows that you're stressed out day to day, I'm not saying he supposed to snap his fingers and make everything go away. I'm not saying on day one of y'all being boyfriend and girlfriend, he supposed to just take all your bills off the table. But there's no way that man should see you in that spot and still go to sleep peacefully with a clear conscience, knowing that his woman is stressed out while simultaneously trying to pull from her cup that's going empty to love on him. There's no way. I don't get it. And, and, and I want to I want to bring in reality to you guys. He said only if he lets us one said only if he lets us. Yeah, there's this again. There's a lot different avenues we need to go. down. I want to bring this into reality. It's not that you're always going to be in this optimal place. This is why I try to I try to I try to balance it out because the truth is the truth. But I don't want to sensationalize and just give you all ear candy. <clears throat> that's not going to help us restore this divide that's in the family that the enemy has attacked. So if it's not where it's supposed to be now, I'm not saying he's trash. Leave him. Just go. But it needs to be treated kind of like an injury, something that needs to rehab. Like, they, like you may have this conversation. Honestly, he should be the one having this conversation. Hey, with you, I realize there's some missing, there's some blind spots in my capacity to do for you what I know I want to do for you and I need to do for you. Here's the plan to get that right. Here's the plan. Here, here's the trajectory. So yeah, you having to work this job right now that's stressing you out. You know, they don't care about your well-being. Your, your income is up and down. You don't feel safe and secure at that job. You don't feel like you're tapping in to your true gifts. Okay, you got to continue to do that right now. But here's the plan to get us out of this. That's the, like, okay, like for instance, I got a back injury, right? So I'm wearing, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm not trying to show you all my body. I got on a back brace. I'm sitting in a certain way. I probably noticed I'm sitting a little different than what sometimes I'm like chilling. I got on a back brace. So my reality is right now, things aren't how they should be, right? Okay, cool. I ain't going to just die, throw away my back. I'm going to get it right. We got so many men out here, and, and I'm calling this out because we really need more men calling out other men. But that have an injury and say, oh, that's cool, injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't have unrealistic expectations trying to be whole and healthy and have a strong lower back. Let's make it just straight more direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you working uh, a job 10 hours a day, then coming home, trying to nurture these children from a depleted soul, from an empty source of energy. From stress and overwhelm and overthinking, you're trying to nurture the children, nurture me. But hey, look, that's life. That's reality. Where did you, who raised you? Brothers? <laughs> and I'm calling you out from love, man, because I've been oblivious. I've been egotistical. I don't know necessarily that's ever been my struggle. No, that's never been my struggle. But I'm no better than you. I'm no better than you. I'm not trying to be on no pedestal. What I'm trying to do is, again, paint the picture vividly so you understand that as you ask this woman to love you, loving your children from a depleted, a depleted place, you're going to constantly be disappointed. And I stress this to my sisters the same way I did to my cousin. There's no way you should remain with a man who's OK with you remaining in survival mode. But he said he ain't no trick. He ain't going. What you mean? Y'all, can we stop? Like, uh, I don't even want to get into what a trick is. Like, we on a higher vibration right now with this conversation. But if that man feels comfortable calling you, texting you, tapping you at three in the morning to solve a, a problem with his, of his, physiological or otherwise, if he's okay with doing that, how dare you feel 
reluctant, guilty, or shameful for saying, hey, for the things that I'm facing, I need you to contribute, whatever they may be. Whatever they may be. If it's carrying groceries in the house, if, if, if it's getting the car wash, taking it down into the car wash, and taking it down to the mechanic, if it is a couple hundred dollars extra this month, because you needed to take additional days off or whatever. Maybe you between, I don't care what it is, but how dare you feel guilt or shame saying, hey, I need you to make my life a little bit better right now. Meanwhile, you're on beck and call. He could ring his little bell to get you to do what he needs you to do. He may not need you to pay no bills or nothing like that. Okay, fine. But for whatever it is that he knows is going to make things move a little bit more quickly and smoothly for him, he can call you, but you can't call him. Now, does that mean that you need to come in expecting a man to carry you or a man should? No. The best relationships operate from overflow. I had an OG teach me this some years back. So what does that mean? That means in the way that you expect your partner to provide value, you're at least okay. At default, you're okay. You're not where you want to be. You're not at the highest level, but you're okay, right? So let's say you want a man to come in, financially contribute, uh, protect you, et cetera, et cetera. You should be okay without a man in your life at all. Same thing goes for a man. As, as men, we want a woman to cook, clean, da, da, da. we should not have a trashy, dirty place. We should not be starving. And we should not be addicted to porn because we just cannot go without sex. We should be okay. If I have to be celibate, if I have to be sexless right now, I'm, I'm okay. It ain't where I wanna be. <laughs> and I'm a man, I get it. it ain't where I wanna be, but I'm okay. Now, why does this work best in a relationship? Because in a relationship, of course, people are going to be, you know, their best selves. They're not best selves. They're going to be available, not available. Things are going to happen. And you never want rock bottom to be survival mode for either person. You as a woman shouldn't be survival mode. He shouldn't be survival mode because in survival mode, you cannot honor any values or principles. You're, you're not going to. You don't, don't, don't bet on yourself. Is it literally possible? Sure. But don't bet on yourself to constantly be in survival mode, but operating from a place of your honor, integrity, and values. It's like if you wouldn't leave uh, a, a starving person alone with your with your plate of food that you plan on eating, right? You, you just know, like, even if they're a good person in survival mode, they're going to do what they got to do to survive. You never want to come into a relationship knowing the survival mode is your current default in any aspect that you expect your partner to show up for you. However, if you both are showing up from overflow, so that man is okay right? Without you cooking and cleaning and stuff like that. But you come in and again, you know how to deep clean. You know how to clean with um, chemicals that don't pollute the air and mess up your immune system, whatever. You know how to cook healthy organic foods. You know you know what I'm saying? You know how to have home cooked meals more, more consistently so that the money can go to things that he needed to go to instead of, you know, burning out on Uber Eats or TV dinners or something like that. You know what I'm talking about. The same thing should go for a man. Even though she's okay, she's okay working that job. She can do it. But I see that she's not operating her fullest self, her most free-flowing, feminine, soft, creative self. So I need to come in and make that easier for her. I need, I need to come in from my overflow and give overflow to this situation. I'm not patching a hole that's messed up. But I dang sure ain't going to let this go down to a place where it is messed up. Whenever she been holding it down on her own for so long, if I'm doing that and she still got to hold it down by herself, why am I here? It's like as a man, you got to have I, we all against pride. I'm for pride. I'm just for managed pride. We got to have more pride than that as a man. And I know like, oh, dear, that's unreal. No, it's not. It's not unrealistic. What's unrealistic is asking a woman to go against her very design. And trying to guilt shame and manipulate and gaslight her into thinking that if she doesn't reach this astronomical, unachievable standard of being everything to you while you're less than average to her, bare minimum to her, if she doesn't do that for a long term, she's not a good wife, she's not wifeable, she's not submissive, y'all, she can't submit to survival mode. She can't submit to survival mode. And the thing is, like I said before, when a woman says I can do bad all by myself, what that typically means is even if, if she's struggling by herself, adding you into the equation that she now has to report to, see about, love on, tend to, it's only going to make things worse. She can do bad all by herself, 
So why would she do worse with you? And again, I'm not for her being a survival mode by herself. Again, just okay. She's working a job. It's okay. She can get it done. She can do it. But that's not where she needs to be. And when we come in, we don't ask for a woman to just show up okay. Oh, man, we want Betty Crocker mixed with a little porn star, mixed with a little nurse. Oh, we want back massage. We want the masseuse. We want everything. We want it all done. And we want that meal hot and ready whenever we come home. We want a sandwich at 2 in the morning. We want her to use both hands whenever she's doing her thing. That We want it all. We don't want a woman mediocre. Let's keep it real. There's no man that said, I just want a woman to be okay with me. We want to be treated like a king. We want to, we want to feel like we got a crown on every time that she talk to us. Right? She don't even, she don't even interrupt two men talking. She, we want that. This, that's the highest level of a woman. How do you think you're going to get that if you're not nurturing? Like, oh, I want I want a car to go optimal speed and optimal efficiency, but you don't want to change the oil. You don't want to make sure it has any oil in it. You want it, you want it, the gas tank to be on E all the time. You, you want the transmission to be messed up. You want all of the working parts to be untended to while getting optimal performance. Now, you tell me in what world that's realistic. Y'all see, I'm... I'm I know I'm talking gibberish to a certain group of people. <laughs> so y'all let me know down in the chat if I'm speaking facts or if I'm speaking fiction from you as a woman's perspective, from your experience with a man and being with a man who you knew wasn't doing everything he could to make life easier. Again, for those just joining, a woman's job is to make that man's life or make that man's potential further, expand the vision, take him further. That's already achieving towards his full potential. But a man's job in a woman's life is to make her life easier. If you notice that that man came into your life and things have only gotten more stressful, harder, more difficult, everything that was good in your life has now slowed down. If you feel like you're grasping for straws, grasping for air, catching nothing for everything that you was pursuing in your life before that man got into there. Now that he's in your life, there's a problem. Am I saying it's over? No. Again, I'm a believer that relationships, even healthy relationships have imperfect and unhealthy seasons. But if you have a conversation with this man and he doesn't even have the value system to establish that that's the goal, that's what we need to be working towards. And here are the tangible, measurable steps towards that goal. Now I say that's over with. I'm never going to tell you to leave a man because he's not his best right now. If you know you've seen enough pattern and trajectory and track record that this man does have integrity and honor. I'm not I'm not kicking my brothers here. I'm not down in my brothers here. If you see there's some progress there, don't just expect them to just clean everything up today. But if you know whenever you come to this man and you talk to him about something like what I'm talking about, maybe you you, you send him my video and you say, hey, look, let's let's discuss this after we both had a chance to watch it. And he's just deaf ears, gets deflective, defensive. Oh, who you, you go, you know, trying to make me be like him. Oh, he ain't nobody. I heard this about him. And he finds any way out of that conversation towards a better version of you in that relationship. Now, you know who you're dealing with. But there's no way you should be sitting there from from week to week. I'm, I'm talking to my cousin, man. There's some of y'all. I know I'm just I'm just kind of chatting with y'all right now. He said, hold on. Let me see what this brother says. Hold on. I don't know if y'all could see this. My ex-girlfriend was struggling with me because I was in severe depression and I could not manage life by myself. And I relied on her support too much. She left me for someone else right after I healed. Let me tell you, uh, Herbertini. And I wasn't even going to talk about this. I'm, I'm, I'm just going off the cuff because I'm fine with that. This is what I do all day, especially for my mentees. Your ex-girlfriend sounds like she was putting on her gas mask. Now, if you couldn't manage life by yourself, one, you said girlfriend, right? So it's first off, not even at the level where she's been secured in terms of the covenant of marriage. Y'all still boyfriend and girlfriend. As a person who has struggled with depression and anxiety, clinically diagnosed, by the way, I'm here to tell you that wasn't her job to be relied on to that capacity to make you okay. That wasn't her job. Even if she was your wife, that's not her job. And I'm not being callous here. 
What I'm saying is you're talking about after you healed, what did the unhealed version of you look like as you were in that relationship? You see, as a man, a lot of times we get caught up in what our internal, our emotional state is. We're depressed. But to that woman, what she's experiencing is very callous words, tactless words. She's experiencing a lot of withdrawal. She's experiencing a lot of criticism. She's experiencing, experiencing having to do everything by herself while constantly having you over here just wallowing. And then at some point, she's going to feel like she's making that problem worse by being your safety net. And again, uh, Herbertini, I'm saying this with love as your brother. I don't play about no mental health at all. I've had to do the Lexapro and the this, the that, the Adderall in order to get myself out of that situation. But again, I didn't rely on a woman to do it. Herbertini, I'm glad that you healed. I'm glad that you got yourself together and all that kind of stuff. But she was only enabling you staying at that place the longer that she kept loving you while you were in that place. Because she was never designed to be your crutch. She was designed to be your helpmate. So this is what I say. And this is just a side note here. Okay, we, We're not really talking about this. But any woman that's dealing with a man who's not his best self, is depressed, anxiety, whatever. You're not his therapist. What you do is make yourself available to him, but only from a place of what capacity you have to offer. You make yourself available. You don't fix him. You don't make him okay. You make yourself available, but only from your capacity. Keep your gas mask on. Keep the boundaries there. <laughs> Otherwise. You're going to pull that woman down, too. And I say this again with, with love, my brother, with love. Now, back to the, the regularly scheduled program. As a woman, for those who's just joining in, there's something I said in the beginning. I'll say it over and over again until at some point we get it. And if what I'm saying is true, as what you understand it to be, please share this so we can spread this truth. There's so many lives that are breaking up the family in all cultures. The enemy is against the family structure. And his greatest weapon against the family structure is an overly prideful and egotistical male that don't want to hear this type of truth. And a shame ridden woman, wrongfully shame ridden woman, because she's inherited blame and responsibility for the shortcomings of somebody else who didn't nurture her the way she was supposed to be nurtured, because it starts with us. And so with that being said, we have to understand something. The woman's role is to expand our vision that we are already creating, and the man's role is to make life easier. Yes, that includes financially. If you can't make her life easier financially, what that tells me is you did not do the work in the garden that you were supposed to do before she came along. Okay, cool. Let's just say that's what it is right now, but you love this woman, you're in a relationship. Now's the time to put the game controllers down to tell your homeboys, nah, I'm not going to go hoop at five today after we get off work. I can get my downtime another time, but my family ain't where I need to be. My girl's stressed out right now. I can't tell her to quit that job. You know, even if you, if you got to find another, you got three months to find you another job because I got us in that time. You got three months to go submit applications, take you two or three weeks just to get your mind right, then go back out in the job hunt. I got us until that point. I can't even do that for my girl. No, I can't. I can't. I can't link up. We're not going to no club. I ain't got money for parking, drinks, a bottle. We're not splitting on a section. I'm not buying a weed. No. If you a man in this situation, and look, I'm talking a language right now that's really fit for more alpha males. And, and this was something I, I went in on, on the free master class, the secrets to attracting alpha males only. And I don't expect any woman to take what I'm saying and be able to communicate this. This is, this is a, a space really for, for men to understand. I'm not one of those that's going to say either he's perfect or he's trash. What I am saying is his value system has to be in a certain place for you to even have a chance. Ladies, sis, if you're talking to this man and you get all of these excuses or blame for you having such high standards, that man is stifling your ability to take a vision further. He's stifling that. Think about it. The worst thing a man can do in a woman's life, I believe, is come in and waste her time. By not adding any value, stringing her along, siphoning out all of her love while adding nothing to her until she dries out and becomes a shell of herself. A woman's greatest harm to a man, and I'm talking about one who is, who is executing a vision, who is taking his potential as far as he can possibly take it, is to sabotage that, to make him powerless, to cut him down, 
The power of death in life is a tongue in the tongue. We know women, y'all can be really, really powerful with your words to cut him down. That's when I've seen a that's when I've seen the biggest tragedy in a relationship. A woman that cuts her man down. Because why? Her greatest value was really to build him up further than what he could even build himself. And so what I'm what I'm getting at here is as a man, you're you're shooting yourself in the foot. You are putting yourself in a bind. You're setting yourself back. If you get this woman and you don't try to make her life easier or you don't set your sights on making her life easier. And that means she ain't paying all the bills by survival mode. If she works, it's because she wants to fulfill her purpose. She loves to be able to work, but only as she she has capacity to. Not because that needs to be the way y'all are able to eat. And if you're not there yet, aim towards that. But again, I'm not about to go too far in depth with that because I made a, I made a whole masterclass secrets to attracting alpha males only because there's a certain type of woman that understands this, that is at the level of her own life where she can operate in this because it's not easy to deal with an alpha male, especially if you're a woman that hasn't grown and evolved herself. So this is one of those masterclasses. I don't tell everybody to go and get a hold of. The link is down somewhere at the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see it, depending on what platform you're watching. But this masterclass is only for women who are ready to operate in their feminine, soft versions of themselves. They're not trying to have it all together by themselves, do it all by themselves while in a relationship. Some women, y'all cool with that. I'll carry. It's like, OK, cool. But if you're a woman that wants to operate securely and safely to your fullest potential, but as a feminine, soft version of yourself, you need to only be entertaining alpha males who understand everything that I'm saying. Even if it, they're at different levels of being able to be this and do that, you're not dealing with somebody you're trying to teach this to for the very first time. You coming into a situation with an alpha male, even if he ain't making, he ain't got a hundred thousand in his account or nothing like that. But as you're talking to him, you're already speaking his language. He's already on there, and you can see a track record that he's already been building in that direction. You, it's no culture shock whenever you say, I want us to be here. I want to be able to do this. No, 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 no. Love it, Faith. I'll see you. I'll see you on the master class. She's talking about after the master class when I open up spots to be in my personal mentorship group. But that's beside the point. If you want access to that master class, secrets to attracting alpha males only. And again, it is absolutely free right now before it comes down and it never stays up for long. Click the link that you see pinned down here and then come on back to the conversation because we wrapping up but if you're in a relationship with a man and you going to sleep stressed not sure about what what, what you're going to do in order to get up for the next day you stressed about oh i gotta work tomorrow but your mental health is is in, in shambles it's chaotic right now you you every time that you ask him for something it's always an argument you can almost hear the answers to everything that you want to express to him. You can hear the answers telling you that you're wrong for having that concern. I'm telling you right now, you either haven't had the right conversation or you're with the wrong man. But if you're asking for a man, and I don't care in what capacity, mentally, financially, spiritually, uh, in any capacity, if you are only asking for a man to make your life easier, you are not asking for too much. You're asking for it from the wrong person. But those are just my thoughts. I'm your internet brother per usual trying to look out for y'all. You know, I take my time, take my energy. I do this because I love y'all. I love the family that is currently under attack, the family structure that is under attack that pits us against each other because we don't truly understand how to come together and make each other's life better, add that value. So I don't ask for no money, man. But all I do ask is that you help me reach more people with this truth by hitting the share button. If you got something of value from it. If you didn't, by all means, do your thing. The only positive review I want, though, is you to make sure you paid it forward to somebody else so they can get this blessing. And if you want access to my free masterclass, Secrets to Attracting Alpha Males Only, again, that link is right here. A lot of y'all be missing my free masterclasses where I really go in. I went in on this one for over an hour on how to attract men with the right mentality for a woman who has evolved, who is growing herself and can help him take that vision to a whole new level. If that's something you're interested in, that link is right here, maybe at the top. Just find a link, Secrets to Attracting Alpha Males Only. If you're on YouTube, you may have to go to my channel description. 
But I'll holla at y'all later. Y'all be good. Peace.